What is going on everybody? I go by the name of Kari and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. Back in 2013, that was the year of the fives. If you guys remember, that was the 23rd anniversary of the Air Jordan 5. And Jordan Brand gave us a lot of different Air Jordan 5s to choose from along with some other really incredible releases. Some of those releases were not as popular as other releases, but today we're taking a look at the reiteration of one of those Air Jordan 5s that dropped back in 2013. And this one, fell underneath the radar and I think it might fall under the radar again. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Air Jordan 5 Oreo. Oh wait, I, I apologize. Uh, let me Let me do this again. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Air Jordan 5 Moonlight. Moonlight. Y'all are really, um, Y'all are really sticking with that name, huh? All right, guys, so here's the deal about this shoe. Before we jump into it, it's a pretty simplistic sneaker. It's the pretty much the same iteration of the Air Jordan 5 Oreo. And I'm probably gonna go back and forth between using the word Oreo and the word Moonlight because I'm just not used to using the word Moonlight. But I wanna talk about how ridiculous this drop is because it feels like they're just taking all of the soul, what little soul was in this sneaker, out of it and trying to force this new narrative that nobody really cares about and nobody can really get on board. With. It feels like they're trying to force a story onto us instead of letting the culture and letting the people that actually did rock with this sneaker back in the day continue to rock with it. Now I do want to go back to the packaging just for a second because there is special packaging on these unlike the 2013 version. This time we actually get a black and white box, pure black and white, whereas on the previous version I believe we had kind of a different kind of jump man. I think it was a red jump man on the lid. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the most notable difference here of course is underneath that on the bottom half of the box you have the black and white speckled print mimicking the shark teeth going all around the sneaker again giving it more of that oreo look or that moonlight look that we're going to talk about a little bit let's get into the shoe all right start with the upper of the shoe here you have an all suede upper on this shoe according to the sneakers app this is all suede doesn't feel like the best feeling suede i guess it's more like a new buck kind of suede material but it's all black all along the upper of the sneaker just like the 2013 version you have this clear kind of translucent mesh netting on the lateral and medial side moving down from there of course you have that white midsole with the black and white speckled shark teeth taking the top down look at the shoe here nothing really different classic air jordan 5 build on this shoe you can see some more of that suede in the toe box there black laces on these no extra laces with that classic clear dubre that lace pull that lace lock whatever you want to call them at the top near the tongue. Always been a fan of this neoprene, really stretchy tongue on the Jordan 5s here when we do get it. You also, of course, get that stitched grayish looking jump man. On the back of the tongue, of course, the classic Air Jordan tag in black. Moving down to the heel of the shoe, you get the white stitch jump man on the heel of the shoe, just like the 2013 version. On the outsole of the shoe, icy blue translucent outsole on the top of the foot with that black jump man in the middle there, classic Jordan branding in the midfoot, and of course, the translucent in the back of the foot as well. And on the insole, black insole with the white jump man on the heel and that's pretty much it when it comes to the air jordan 5 moonlight or the 2021 air jordan 5 oreos let's go back in time a little bit to 2013 because if you guys remember there were some incredible drops going down that year if you were around in 2013 you might have gotten your hands on some of the biggest most coveted drops of jordans that still people are looking for to this day you had everything from the shanghai shen jordan 5s to the fire red jordan 5s the door Jordan Becker Jordan that year was a Jordan 5. You also had the Laney 5s that dropped. You guys remember the three Lab 5s that dropped. That was a very interesting sneaker. We even got women's or girls or grade school exclusive Jordan 5s. Remember those purple pink things? I don't think a lot of people like those, but those came out in 2013 as well. But on November the 29th, 2013, we got these, the Air Jordan 5 Oreo, and they were met with a lot of mixed emotions. Now, during that time of the year, some people were trying to save up their money for some of the other drops that were dropping around that time of the year. We got the Gamma Blue 11s, that was a holiday release. We also got the Bread 1s, that kind of snuck in there right at the end of the year. So a lot of people actually ended up sleeping on these. They did not buy these sneakers. They didn't buy these. Actually, I remember a lot of pairs really sitting on the shelves. Some people didn't like the materials. Some people just didn't like the way that the white was inside of the shoe, which personally was my issue with the sneaker 
and still remains my issue with the shoe. When you have all this white and especially when you have this cotton kind of felt material as the sock liner, the moment that you put any sock in there, it's a wrap. It's gonna just grab whatever is on your sock. So if you wear some black socks with these, it's over. But a lot of people just weren't really big fans of the shoe. Now, Jordan Brand actually went in with the Oreo theme of the sneaker back in 2013, even if you guys remember releasing a little bit of merchandise, that famous t-shirt that had the black and white Air Jordan 5 with a bite taken out of the front of it with crumbs all around it, literally looking like an Oreo cookie. So we fast forward into 2021 and now in the sneakers after this sneaker, this is what I'm seeing. If you wear these by night, you'll be in stealth mode, but if you're revealed by the moonlit sky, your kicks will match what you see above. A black and white speckled shark tooth design along the midsole resembles the night sky and its stars. What? I know that there's some people at Jordan Brand that were around during the original release of this sneaker, and I don't know what kind of meetings were had that this project got greenlit under Moonlight as opposed to even calling it Cookies and Cream or something. Like, I understand if you can't use the formal term Oreo. I understand that's a brand name. I understand Jordan Brand probably didn't want to cut Nabisco the check. That's fine. But you guys could have at least kept with the theme of Cookies and Cream. I mean, I feel like Nike and Jordan does that a lot. They say things without really saying them. Them, you know but for whatever reason they were just like nope totally forget that entire story totally forget the nickname that the entire sneaker community uses for this sneaker and let's go ahead and do an entirely new story but let's also pay homage to that story in that little sneaker skit that you guys may have seen have you guys watched these stories yet on the sneakers app this one that talks actually about these fives and apparently the legend is that somebody spills their milk and it goes against michael jordan's sneakers and somebody says cookies and cream but then they're like no, 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 that's not the real story. The real story is that people camped under the moonlight for the shoe and me and everybody else that I know said, I'm sorry, what? You know, these sneakers actually remind me of what's going on with my sneakers account right now. Maybe I'm living in the past. I've had my sneakers account since 2012 or 13, I can't remember, but maybe that's the reason why I'm catching so many L's and so many people with brand new accounts are catching all the W's. Maybe Nike is trying to get us to come into these new years and adopt all these new stories and kind of put the past where the past is, except for when they want to bring up the past or they want to pay homage to a little bit of nostalgia. Case in point, this here is the lemon acid wash 1985 dunk high if you guys remember these these actually came out in a red color and in a lemon color and i liked them i thought they were pretty dope leather was pretty solid on these and it really paid homage to those old 1985 vibes not only that but there was special edition packaging i'm sorry because fedex ace ventura in my package and crushed it but if you guys look at the packaging here this actually pays homage to the old vhs videotapes from back in the mid 80s as well they say 1985 on it all that good stuff so nike is capable of paying homage to the past and paying homage to vintage things except when it comes to these new Jordan 5s. Now we're supposed to take on a whole different narrative that's updated for 2021 without paying homage to the past. And that's why I get confused as a sneakerhead. Which one is it, Nike? Do you guys want us to pay homage to the past or do you guys want us to adopt these new stories and totally forget about what made some of these sneakers popular in the first place? I don't get it. But you know what I think the answer is? Yes, that's the answer to my question. They want us to do both, but they want us to do both when they want us to do both. They want us to appreciate the past when it's time to appreciate the past, when it's time to put out a product that pays homage to the past. And then they want us to adopt this new take that totally forgets about the history of a sneaker if they want to cater to a new audience of people. And that makes a lot of sense. Nowadays, they feel like hype drives everything. And so with this new hype driven culture, maybe they can revitalize this old school sneaker that really set back in the day, but now maybe a new generation of kids will actually want to buy this shoe but to me the storyline is still weak and I don't really see it connecting even with generation Zers or with millennials like myself I don't know guys if I hadn't got this shoe on exclusive access y'all probably wouldn't even have seen these on the channel because even now on the resale market these are already going for retail and we're still about a week out from the sneaker dropping I believe it's supposed to drop on September the 10th September the 11th something around that time but again I got a feeling that these aren't gonna be selling out quite as fast as a lot of the other Jordans that we've been seeing selling out lately. But that's pretty much all that I gotta say about these. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the 2021 Air Jordan 5 Oreo, AKA the Air Jordan 5 Moonlight. Are you guys feeling the new name? Do you guys still call them the Oreos? Are these a hard pass for you? Or are these a must cop? Sound off down below, let me know. Of course, right down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat 
on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sticker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Jordan 5 Moonlight for 2021. And until next time, I'm out.